It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles coming up next. We're just a stone's throw from the Delaware River. We've got some water to contend with ourselves. A steady rain falling at Lincoln Financial Field. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Jake Elliott ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. But number eight, Lamar Jackson trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now he's turned himself into a true dual threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Right away, they rack up 10 yards on their first play from scrimmage. Good job there. Pretty simple. The hole was created. Runner just darted right through. Yeah, that's kind of play teams are looking for to have some success early in a ball game. And if you're an offensive play caller, you mark that run down. Make sure you keep coming back to it throughout the game until they stop it. Shedding the tackle. And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Now it's Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now two yards to go on third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Well, you know, if you've got the defense laying back, maybe that option works, but if you're coming hard on third down... It doesn't work because you force the hand of the quarterback and the runner too quickly, and most of the time, unsuccessful. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It's taken to the 26. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philly's offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. 
They'll start out on the ground in Saquon Barkley. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second down and three. Hurt's going to keep it running right. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Deontay Hardy back deep. Fielded just inside the 20. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt, and now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They begin with Henry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. That's big Jordan Davis powering in to drop him. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Play action, it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Zay Flowers with it. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 44-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Henry out of the pistol. And he has met half the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No score after one on EA Sports. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. On second down, Jackson, as they've got it as we resume action. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagle 16. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. 
And in for the Ravens touchdown. Zay Flowers, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Ravens post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and that makes the score 7-0. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. It hasn't gone particularly well for them, that's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, Finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. From the 21, it's second and 10. Hurts to Barkley on the check down. Five yards, now it's third and five. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Throwing his hurts. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Hurts to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Barkley inside handoff. And the defense on him quickly there as they stop him at the 30 for a gain of just two. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Play action. Here's Hurts. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there. As that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A good pick up there, 22. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Slant pass hauled in by Campbell. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. 
Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Hurts right here taken in as he's able to find Goddard. Touchdown, Eagles! Dallas Goddard, 30 yards! And the Eagles are an extra point away from drawing level. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive in total eight plays. And the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Gaynor. this out past the 20 to the 24. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson about ready to take over once more. He had the touchdown pass last time they had it. And they'll start here with a first and 10. Here's Jackson. Throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Jackson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. And they approach this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. The incompletions on the first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get the momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Inside handoff, Henry. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. Jackson's throw pulled in by Aguilar. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Draw play. This is Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 49 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. He's got it complete. Derrick Henry. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime.
second down and four. Now Jackson. He's got Derrick Henry again. Back-to-back -back catches. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And out a little across the 25 and the 27. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. It's a tied football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 27. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this one complete to Smith. And they work this well up field across the 35. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? They're able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Hurt sets up to throw it. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, who can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. On second down, here's Barkley. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. This defense not budging. Back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? 
beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Now Jackson taps this forward jet sweep, and that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there, and they'll go backwards right away. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, then maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Third down and 10. Now it's Jackson. And he's unable to haul it in. So he falls it incomplete on the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. And he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Throw left side complete. That's Campbell. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Barney sold the goal route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Two yards to go, second down. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. But this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And we will remain tied here in this third quarter. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Flowers going to go in motion right. He's going to handle it on the touch pass. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. 
This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. Dancing to his left. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A nice job of eluding the pressure there, scrambling for 11. Time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Going for the set by Big Jalen Carter. Third and one, they opt to pass it. And the one thing happened that could not happen, they took a sack. Yeah, I just wonder, is that an indictment of their offensive line? Did they think that they couldn't move him enough to pick up a first down there? Or was it analytics? Did they think about it that way? In any event, they'll be studying that in the future. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they got themselves in the field goal range. Gave them a chance to take the lead. They come up empty, and now you wonder, will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. Play action with Hertz. And he'll get this underneath, dropping it off for Barkley. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Now, whistles and a stoppage here. Looks like one of the Eagles is in some discomfort out there. Now, a second and two. A handoff to Barkley on the option. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. They keep it with Barkley on first down. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. They'll give it to Barkley off the option play. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Forced out to his left. Six yards there off the scramble, but it will still leave him with a third down. The plan was clearly to challenge them by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He doesn't scramble for a first, but he does get the last laugh by evading the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, the elements, the crowd, the situation, this is NFL football at its best. Here's third down. Gets this to Campbell out on the right side. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. 
Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And they're looking at fourth down now in this tie ball game. So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott. This for the lead in the final stages. The kick by Elliott is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 10-7, a minute 53 remaining. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Here's Jackson. Connecting with Andrews. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. I like what they did there. Still keeping their tight ends involved. They understand it's not quite Hail Mary time just yet. Here's second and a yard. Throwing. Jackson. Yet again, targeting and fighting Mike Andrews. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, to watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Jackson to throw. A short throw caught by Andrews. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Very sharp here to start this drive, three for three. Yeah, I like the way he's running this two-minute drill. Very sharp, very precise in throwing the football. Here comes second down. Jackson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Josh Schwartz rushing in and bringing him down to the ground. Brandon, you got to have some urgency here. you got to get the guys back to the line of scrimmage, but the problem is all 30 yards downfield after that play. Well, you don't have to beg the Philly faithful to make noise on their feet for third down. He's got his target. That's complete. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and ten. Running from the gun with Henry. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. Four seconds to go. This would send us to overtime. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and they will tie this game here in the final seconds. 
So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So Just overtime on the horizon, the barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. Only going to get worse as we get back to football here to start this overtime. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And the Ravens taking the field. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles. <laughs> My palms sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself. But let's face it, our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? The end result, 21 yards. So they come out throwing in the extra session and get a nice hook up right away. Tells you a lot about what a coach feels about his team, doesn't it? That type of a play in overtime, so many people in this situation play not to lose instead of playing to win. That throw there tells you exactly what they're trying to get done. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face, good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. Second and ten, here's Jackson again. Five yards, now it's third and five. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Here's Jackson to throw. Taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. A first down carry for Henry. Fights loose. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. From the 38 now, here's second and five. They run over center with Mitchell, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three.
throwing is Jackson. The look in deep here for Flowers. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Zane Cutler's there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to at least get him a lead here in overtime. Tucker's kick is good, and they will take the lead at 13 to 10. That was a big risk here in overtime. It sent him out to fire away from long distance, but he knocks it through to give him the lead. Edgy, edgy, don't you think? Because if he misses there, ball goes to the spot of the kick, correct? Yep. And guess what? That only gives about, what, 20 yards or so for, for them to go downfield and be in position themselves. So you have confidence in him, and you have confidence in your defense to so go ahead and let him kick that one. So only a field goal on that opening drive of overtime. Will that hold up? We'll find out as the kick's away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Well, it's pretty simple now. They need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime or obviously, Charles, a touchdown to win it. Yeah, and I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? Overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because you're going to play everyone back keep everything in front. Out across midfield, down to the 45. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man Cubs are so committed to denying the big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And that's going to be caught downfield by Brown. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown and the game winner in OT. A great game, partner. Spectacular finish. They needed at least a field goal to keep the game alive. They do one better. They get it in the end zone and end it. And I don't know about you, but I'm worn out. That type of a game takes it all out of us as well, not just the guys on the field. What a tremendous finish, and as you noted, were they going to go and try and get three and keep the game going? And that was a good one for them. They got the touchdown, and that's why we're able to say goodbye. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire 